In a minute, I will show you a diary. Well, a diary that doubled as a breathing exercise, that tripled as a love letter. I did not know when I began those jottings that I would write a book. I was coping with cataclysm, funneling obsession into observation. I did not know that it would become a document of love, a story of two women who walked into the sea of each other and never return. It has become a memoir, a repository of secret questions, a conversation about loss, a battle with the quicksand of forgetting. There's turned out to be a great deal more about death than I anticipated. And daughters, and forebears, the gnarled grip of ancestry squeezing every chapter until it yields new juice. But mostly, this is a map, a document drawn in real time for the route I use to bring my erotic animal home. You began as my colleague, my slightly older, quietly wiser friend. In some ways, you knew the map from the beginning. You were, you still are, a tiny, muscly bronze thing with the vigilant eyes of a still deer and a fragrant halo of curls. Remember the first time you actually came into smelling range? The way you gently scooted up the cafe banquet so that you could appraise a grammatical problem I'd confected just to get your face over my page. That first time, I gasped internally. I know you didn't hear me, but inside that loaded silence, you smelled, there is no other way to say it, like mine. Not mine like I possessed you, but mine like you belonged in me, were atomically of me. Like your voice and your tiny fingers moving across space as you explained yourself, acted out my earliest inklings of want. Warm wood, hot sand, toasted almonds, my mother's shoulders, my toddler's sweat. Oblivious, you attended to the editorial conundrum at hand. From memory, it was about conditional verbs. Oblivious, you did not pick up on my mounting vertigo, perhaps because I was happily married to a man. Or perhaps because you were in a good thing with your woman. Or maybe it was the exact opposite. You were impervious to my worrying pheromones because you had already shattered a marriage once and no part of you wish to walk on that broken glass again. Sitting next to you, I felt the outlines of your wildness in my womb with an instinct both undeniable and outside syntax. The magnet behind my navel was doing its silent work, drawing you closer into the part that knows but does not speak. I did not let myself look at your mouth damning my imaginings. Then one day, not long after that, with a certainty that stunned us both, you caught my hunger. Something had altered in you, an alchemy that was beyond us then and remains beyond us now, some three years down the track. But suddenly, you were looking at me with eyes that had already begun, swallowing. And that gaze caught deep in my throat, warped my inner lining. You are the woman I'm going to do this with, we said to each other silently. Standing in the street, in broad daylight, pupils dilated, waters coursing, the sun cutting its bold diagonal between our feet. 